Welcome back. It is the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa off the press and mercy you have that covered. All right, uh, we will start off with the leadership newspaper this morning on off, uh, the press and of course G.D. Johnson will join us in no time to make sense of all of the headlines that we do have. Uh, looking at the front page of the leadership newspaper this morning, let's find out what the bold caption says. Despite military onslaught, bandits kill 454, kidnap 1,239 in five months. Uh, talking about insecurity, that's the board caption on the leadership. You've got several riders, 996 terrorists surrender, 258 killed in northeast and northwest in two weeks. Defense headquarters is quoted on that. No rest for you until Nigerians enjoy peace, President Mohamed Buhari tells security chiefs. Away from that, Nigeria needs 207 billion naira for digital census. NPC is quoted on that. You also have, uh, I bought, okay, quite not, um, not as if it's not important, but we'll just let that slide. Corruption in security remain Nigeria's woes. Mogalu is quoted on that. And you also have Fashola Malami Open Complete at Chokoto Tambowal Jagar Road. Uh, these are some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. All right, from the leadership, we'll move on to the Daily Independent. Anambra poll confirms 2023 not under threat. That's according to the President, Muhammad Buhari. Uh, with a rider there, gives fresh marching order to service chiefs to crush bandits insurgents. Realignment uh, below the pictorial there. Realignment in APC favors Tinabo's presidential bid. Then just below that, um, on a red strip, a Wallawa a Zero Oil advocate takes a bow at NEPC. Above the masthead, there are some stories there uh, this morning. Let's see if we can take some of them. Federal government may apply STIFA sanctions against oil firms degrading Niger Delta. Beside that particular story, IU vows to pro PDP past administration over 11.8 billion naira. Other stories on the Daily Independent this morning AIG Garuba, Buba Omar emerges, Interpol vice president for Africa. Investigate alleged stealing of Olu of Worry's crown, Ayiri tells IGP. Song Olu delivers Ibeshe Lagos Homes project. Adds 480 homes to house and stock. You know, those are the stories you can find on the front page of the Daily Independence this Friday morning. Let's move away from the Daily Independent and check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Bandits occupy Kaduna Abuja Road operates for four days. That's a bold caption on the Daily Trust still in security. Sack more Niger communities. Touch farmlands in Zamfara, rider, uh, the first rider day. Eight victims rescued. Please neutralize ringleader. Buhari direct hot chase as military deploys troops. And away from the banner caption and the security concerns. Pro PDP's missing 11 billion, 11.8 billion naira, ex party chair tells EFCC. Yakasai IBM. Aruna to Buhari, don't pardon Kanu. That's also another banner caption this morning. And you have 14 million out of school children, potential Boko Haram recruits. That's what the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Olusegun Obasanjo, is quoted to say. Robert disguised as Fulani head arrested in Ogun. And troops kill 128 bandits in two weeks this is some of the headlines on the daily trust newspaper this morning and finally it will be the punch for us uh, this morning the lead story uh, for this morning subsidy federal government may deduct 2.5 trillion naira party from federation account plans talks there are writers there states provide list of 42 million beneficiaries of 5,000 naira largesse monthly Government must fix refineries before removing subsidy, Pengerson insists. Other stories on the punch above the masthead. Uh, we have uh, Boko Haram has ready tools from today's 14 million out-of-school 
children. That's Obasanjo, former president, saying, Malami, a row head of EFCC's move against Obiano, Anambra, alleges. Nigeria Air, federal government to float IPO, begins operations with three planes. Fuel worth 12.87 billion naira lost in seven months, according to the NNPC, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. There's a pictorial there, the Lagos housing project. Uh, the caption is uh, Lagos planning 3,400 housing units for workers. That's according to the governor, Son Wolu. Trafficker caught with 2.7 billion naira cocaine claims 1 million naira reward for mother's eye problem. Okay, comedian Babasue buried his family. Islamic clerics disagree. Also, we are kidnapped or we are kidnapped, raped while traveling to Libya, says 21 year old returnee. Another story there Palacio Mansion, super. Exotic cars, how Nigeria's fake investment gurus live in luxury while victims lament. Those are all the stories you can find on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. All right, uh, we have uh, GD Johnson uh, standing by, and uh, together we'll be looking at some of um, the stories uh, making headlines. Uh, Mercy, you want to lead? GD Johnson, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you, Messi, and our viewers all over the world. All right, so Justin. Yeah, thank you so much. Let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. And uh, on the leadership, you have the issue of the onslaught, despite the onslaught by the military. Feels like bandits still, you know, succeeding as they kill 454, kidnap 1,239 in five months. I mean, this is according to the accounts of the leadership. Now, if you, if you see the account of the leadership, which is a flagship newspaper and that gives story from the Northern perspective, and then you relate that story with what we have in the Daily Trust, which is a flagship newspaper that gives story from the Northern perspective, you have the story, Bandits Occupy Katna, Abuja Road, operate for four days, Sanborn, yeah. Niger community, Stodge farmland. Um, you, you discover that insecurity is a major issue affecting us now, and that spread all over parts and parcel of this country. I raise this question that the critical military infrastructure of Nigeria is in Kaduna. The administrative head of the critical military infrastructure of Nigeria is in Abuja, and the critical political infrastructure of Nigeria is in Abuja. And if we cannot, with all of this infrastructure, provide a safety corridor between Kaduna and Abuja, then something is wrong. We cannot, we cannot provide safety corridor for the whole of Nigeria because if all those critical infrastructures are there, and yet we are having banditry, we are having insurgents, as far as I'm concerned, those are terrorists. They are not, they are not, they are not, they are not bandits. We are just stippling to the gallery. And if you check the writer of the story in the Daily Trust, Bari directs or chase as military deploy troops. Now, must the president direct? I think that in the last six years, there have been complaints and clamor, let's change the service teams. Probably when we change the service teams, they bring in new hands, they fight against the soldiers, they fight against Boko Haram, and the rest of it will be able to win the war. We, you see, until we hold people accountable to the oath of office they swore before they are, when they are elected, and when they make campaign promises, we will not make progress in this country. We will not make progress. The first responsibility of any government is to defend, protect its citizen, both from internal and external aggression, protect lives and property, and defend the territorial integrity. We have a situation in Niger where flags of ISWAP were being raised, where community were being sacked, and where Taxes are being collected by non-state actors, by non-state agents. And then you wonder, do we have security agencies? Do we have intelligence communities? And why can and how can government not be able to nip this issue in the board? It's, 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 it's unbelievable that you will take every now and then the president, the president will, 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 will direct 
we struck that you will lose no sleep. You know, it's 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 just it's just I I, I don't want to use um a derogatory a derogatory mark for the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria because it is not the person; it is it is the office which represents us, which represents you and you 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 and you and I. People should be held accountable, and that's my take on this on this issue. Not none of us can travel freely as we used to travel across across like that people should be at jail of themselves and we should use the proper term declare these people terrorists declare them a citizen of no nation and let's deal with this particular issue so that international police agencies can arrest now we read the story of a nigerian a nigerian igp uh, agp being 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 appointed as a as the vice president of Interpol, we must deal with this security issue. We can't deal with it with with, with kick gloves. Now, the, the the there is a general of the British Allied Command during the Second World War. He said there are three forces that you need to win a war. He said one, you need the physical force, you need the moral force, and then you need the intelligence force. Now, we want to win the war against insurgency with physical. And I ask, before these attacks are carried out, what are the level of intelligence that we gather? What is the state of intelligence gathering? In, in, what is intelligence in the first instance? Intelligence is processed information. Information that you have collected, that you have distilled and you have processed and that you have interpreted to make sense, to make sense, to make sense out of it. Every now and then, is security is used, mandatory, kidnapping, Maiming of Nigerians that 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 we hear of it's, it's, it's okay, it's, but but Jide Johnson as a follow up to that, uh, the defense headquarters is saying that 996 terrorists have surrendered, and we should uh, you know expect some level of reduction with all of the crime and criminality. Should they surrender or should they be prosecuted? I'm asking you now when they surrender to the military hierarchy. They should be handed over to the police for prosecution. We must do things right. Are you getting me? Look, if you put up an attitude that criminality pays, you encourage criminality. When you begin to call people that have rendered Nigerians, law abiding Nigerians, homeless, that have separated family from one another, that have sacked communities, that have destroyed economic investment of other nigerians and you call them repentant you call them repentant ph link that story with what general lucia Gobasan just said he said 14 million out of school children is a potential danger is a potential recruitment army for boko haram and government must wake up to his responsibility if government cannot wake up to his responsibility there are options is either you resign or you are impeached these are these are these are these are basic instruments that are provided for in democratic governance. Those are democratic principles. Can we say that it is safe to travel in Nigeria? I was listening to um, the plenary of, of the of the of the National Assembly yesterday when one house one of one house of representative member was lamenting and complaining about insecurity in the country that they can't travel to their constituency. And it's, it's a serious, it's a serious issue. We must have a coordinated approach, and people must be held accountable. Who is the local government chairman of this area? Who is the SSS director of that state? Who is the SSS person in the local government? Who is the ICDC person? Who is the divisional police officer? Nobody has been held accountable. Nobody has been sacked. Nobody has been queried. It's just as business as usual. They know that we will talk because we love talk shop, and they can. We will have our say, but they will have their way. It's unfortunate. It's All right, unfortunate. Uh, all right Mr. Johnson. Uh, the, the talk of um, uh, fuel subsidy is still gathering more momentum, and that more stories are you know, you know breaking concerning that it's, by it's the day. It's unfortunate that we are still talking about subsidy in this age and time. And, um, and I'll I put the blame. I'll put the blame on us that works in the media industry. Our responsibility, according to Section 22 of 1999 Constitution, as amended, is that we shall be the watchdog and we shall hold government accountable. How should we report stories of subsidy? Is there a subsidy? 
The media should investigate whether we are actually paying subsidy or we are not paying subsidy. We were told that subsidy has been removed, and that's why the pump prices of petroleum product was, was taken away from 97 naira to 145, one from 145 one to 165. Who is fooling who? And then if you are going to pay 2.4 palliative, is that not subsidy? It's just plain on grammar. Federal government may deduct 2.4 million trillion for federation. States have already compiled the list of, of the beneficiary. 42 million. million. How did they come yeah. about? How, how did they come about the 42 million? What instrument do they use to compile the list? Where do they compile the list? Where did they compile the list? How do they compile the list? You recall the issue of trader money. Where is trader money? The trader money before the election. Now we are now having this that they are going to give 5,000 to poor. What are the indices that they use to determine those that are poor and those that are not poor? Now, this particular government came into power promising to fix the refinery. Have they fixed the refinery? We said the oil in crude form. And that's why we have crude thinking. We have crude government and we have crude policies because the natural resources that God has given to us, which is crude oil, which we need to process, we did not process because we have crude administrators that have crude policies and crude government, and as a result of that, the people will suffer the crudeness of, 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 of ineptitude of people that we have charged with, with response. Where is this money coming from? Take that story, because it's an economic story. Take that story and relate that story with what the National Population Commission is saying, that we need 207 billion for digital sensors. 207 billion. They should share that money to every Nigerian. At least an every, every Nigerian, we have we we'll have um, we we'll have um, a minimum of one million or two million naira from these two point two hundred and seventy to just to do sensor. So they should just put the money in one bank and let people go to the bank and collect the money with their BVN. Then we know we don't need any to do any digital. Nigerians will be direct beneficiary of government spending money that cannot be accounted, that cannot be accounted. That cannot. When they mention this money, you begin to wonder. But we said we are taking loans. Where are we going to get all this money to do all of all of all of these things? God will help us in Nigeria, but we need to help ourselves by holding them, by holding them, by holding them accountable. Because I don't know where they are going to get this 400 million. You lead that story with Lagos State story. Lagos is planning 3,400 housing units for workers. How many workers do they have in work? If they are having 3,400 4, housing units for workers. What about the citizens? What about the citizens? I have said this. These people are playing to the gallery. When Baba Chakonde built his own house, he built his own house in such a way that the poor and the middle class could access it. There were no computers then. Computers were not in existence. You can't have the federal house and have the state house. You, and you can't buy two. You can't. You can't buy two of those Chakonde Chakonde estate. You can You can only get one. You, there were no computers. Technology has not developed to what it has developed to now. But you know what they do with the housing project of Lagos State? It's a racket. You can quote me on that. It's a racket. I purchased from for Lagos homes. The houses were actually sold. It was not done based on what we were told when they want to do it. Now, you have a situation whereby government will use state resources to build the houses and public officials and elected officials will use state resources to acquire this property and sublet these houses to, 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 to other individuals. To other individuals. There's no transparency in any housing policies that you have in Lagos State. I can say that very far. Then the governor is so proud to say that they are going to do 3,000 housing units. These people, they have no shame at all. They have no shame at all. 3,400 units for workers. All right, let, let's also um, look at the leadership news. People. I'd like to ask you, do you agree with Mogalu? He says that uh, corruption and insecurity remains Nigeria's war. Well, what, are, what was the campaign team of APC in 2015? That the, 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 the trust of their campaign in 2015 was to do what? To fight corruption and to provide security. 
You see, these people, when they want to seek election, they will use this buzzword to try to convince us. And you, want, you should understand the fact that the principles of marketing communication have been taken into political communication. So the way you sell products and services, we have also designed and developed means of selling candidates, of selling parties, of selling of selling illusion. And you know what? Madison Avenue makes its money from illusion. The advertising industry, the marketing communication industry makes money from creating illusion, working on your perception through persuasive communication. And this political class, they develop even better than the marketing communication people, that they sell us illusion. They sell us different types of illusion. The trust of this administration is that they will fight corruption and that um, the issue of insecurity will be dealt with. What is the state of insecurity in Nigeria? Is there in the pages of newspaper? What would be the reality of this administration is what we have in the newspaper. You do a content analysis of the newspaper in the last in the last six years, and let's see the story that dominated the front page of the newspaper. It's insecurity. So it's the scorecard of the administration. And you see the issue of corruption also being there. It will be in the front corner. So history will place this administration in the rightful place. And what I look at this campaigning that is corruption is corruption. I've asked people, when people are campaigning for election, let them come with a template. Look at the story that they gave in, in one of the newspapers that realignment in APC favors the no Bush presidents. Is that, should that be a story in the front page of a newspaper? That is not a new story. It is an opinion. And the opinion was, was placed in the front page of the newspaper as a new story. What's my business with whether the alignment or no realignment or in the APC favors, favors Sinumbu? The alignment in the APC, is that a new story or an opinion? And that's one of the areas in which my industry has done the service to this to this country. Should you know we will parade himself to be president of Nigeria? This set of 1999 politicians, what have they done? And you ask yourself these questions. Are these characters, these are the characters that you want? Has he even declared his intention to be the presidency, whereby the media now becomes the mad piece? If you want to write an opinion, put your opinion inside the pages. And let's know that it is features, it is opinions, and it, the articles. Not a new story. So it is, it is, let him declare his intention. When he declares his intention, we we'll deal with that. We we'll ask questions. What are the templates? What is economic policy? Bukala Saraki, they say someone talk about Bukala Saraki declares his presidential. Let them declare. Then we ask them about their policy. How are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? And then we use the scorecard of them. When you are governor of Kwara State and the Senate president, what were your antecedents? You, you have been the godfather of Lagos State. What have you done in Lagos State? When it rains in Lagos State, whether you can drive your car. I'll ask you that question. We will get there. We will get to that. We will cross. We will ask them questions. We cannot be full again. And we can't fold our hands. We will not be taken to the gallery on the basis of people writing stories, um, packaging, packaging future articles as new stories. All right, uh, Mr. Johnson. Um, another story that uh, you know made them front page of Daily Independent is uh, the Niger Delta. Federal government may apply stiffer sanctions against oil firms degrading the Niger Delta. Government does not need to do that. They don't need to say that. You go ahead with your policies. Why we stiffer? Why? What were the, the the people charged with responsibility of supervision and monitoring this, of monitoring this sector? Must we get to the point of bringing out the, must we use the carrot and stick approach, or must we use the, the, the sledgehammer approach for public policy? When you, are, when you do what you are supposed to do at the right time, you get the result you want to get. But that government may apply civil sanctions. Must you get to the point of applying sanctions before public policies are implemented, before enforcement of public policies are carried out? Just till I'm asking you. Hmm. Must you be sanctioned for you to come to this, um, to, 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 to the studio this morning to come on set to do this program? Hmm. Nobody. You are not forced to wake up from your bed. You know it's a duty. It's your duty. You have to be on set. Same for, for Messi. You have to be on set. You are not pressured to be on set. You are not forced to be on set. 
Sanction was not used against you, but it's a call to duty. And those that we have charged with the responsibility of public governance, enforcement of public policy, should not be pressured. They shouldn't be telling us they are insult. They are, you see the way these people expose their, their ineptitude. It's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. All right, let's also still stay with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning, uh, looking at the statement of Mr. President. Uh, that the Anambra uh, election confirms 2023 not under threat. Of course, uh, there's been a lot of talk prior to that time that the what would be the outcome of that election would be a reflection of what will happen in 2023. What are your thoughts? We, we can't use a cycle election to judge election. Election took place in Anambra State in 21 local government. We are talking election in Nigeria and several hours of before local government and 36 states of the federation, including the federal capital territory. We are talking about a high stake election, election across the National Assembly, State House of Assembly, um, State House of Assembly, um, the President, gubernatorial election. So the stakes are higher than what we have in Anambra State. Even the one we had in Anambra State, we saw it has to, it took the deployment of massive security agencies across board to get that election to bed. And then we saw one issue that came out with inconclusive election. And we have said there's a dangerous trend. There's a tremendous trend in the inconclusive election. May he never happen during the presidential election in such a way that we have an election that has been conducted on the day of the election and we couldn't announce the result because the election couldn't take place in some state of the federation. And as a result of that, he declared the election inconclusive. And you have a, 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 a small margin between the leading candidate between the two leading candidates in that election. What do you think will happen? So as far as I'm concerned, an Anambra election has come, it has gone, where it was okay, the turnout, where we can improve on that. We see what happened in the Kitiano State in 2022. And we see the preparedness, the level of preparedness of INEC, and whether INEC is fully prepared concerning the election. And when it comes to electoral matters, it's not even the responsibility of the president to talk about the election. It's the responsibility of the INEC to talk about the election. The president should talk about governance and leave the issue of election to INEC. It's INEC that will talk about based on what we have seen, this is what will happen in 2023. That's why it's called the Independent National Electoral Commission. But some of us have argued that it's not independent because the the, the section in the Constitution that um, made provisions for INEC is under what is called a certain executive body. It said a certain executive body. And that's why some of us have clamored that they should take the the, the, the the Independent National Electoral Commission should be taken to the judiciary and not and not the executive that should be taken to the judiciary. So hopefully we hope and pray like the probably that what we have in an umbrella where people are turning down money and voting according to conscience and we allow the will of the people to prevail we we actually affect um, the twenty twenty three elections so that we have that scenario and something positive will happen concerning that election. Relating that story to Another political story is the, is the threat of by the national chairman, the newly elected national chairman of uh, PDP, in the person of his, uh, Yasha Ayu, saying that um, he, will, he, will, he, will, he will investigate um, um, he will missing 11 billion. administration for spending 11.8 billion. And I've said this over time that people don't know the kind of corruption that goes on within the party system. If the party system is corrupt, which is the foundation for public governance, if the party system is corrupt, the government that the party system will institute will be corrupt. When parties don't respect their own constitution, when they don't follow their own process and procedure, when they get to government, they will not follow process and procedure laid back down by the constitution. Where do they get that money from? They got the money from high fees they collect for nomination. You could see that in APC now, you have a contraption, you have, you have a, an unbelievable arrangement whereby a governor is still the caretaker committee, committee chairman. The power of the national chairman is too powerful. Uh, we said it's a federal system of government. It is the responsibility of our chairman concerning who becomes the governor of Lagos State. That should be for the party people in Lagos State to decide. It should be limited to the voters and the party hierarchy of people in Lagos State. Say for Kanu. So for my local government should be limited to my local government, not for not for the state. So we must practice democracy in the way that it should be done. And you know, Barista, Barista, uh, uh, the Barista sang was up. He said, let us practice democracy in the way it should be done. 
you need to listen to that music. It's called reality. It's, it's, it's a lot of practice. And he sang that song more than, more than, more than 30, 35 years ago. He said, Nigeria, Nigeria, which way are we going? From, for us to have a kind of democracy we want, we must practice the democracy the way it should be practiced. Now, you have a situation now. ABC has postponed their own Congress till, till, till February next year because the Office of the National Chairman is powerful. Why? What consumed Adam Soshomale? It was the issue of money or no money, um, corruption. Why would party be collecting 25 million, 35 million, 55 million from people that want to contest election? You are always preparing them to go and steal money. The nomination fee. And when they send the nomination fee, you collect money from candidate A, candidate B, candidate C, that we are going to give the ticket. That's why you have different types of litigation affecting it. They will promise five candidates, collect money from five candidates, and then they will be substituting them, doing all manners of shady and shenanigans. And that's why you have this 11.8 billion. This 11.8 billion, you should have given it to a local government or should have gone back to government. We hope um, it's not grandstanding that they will look into the, into the matter and then um, those that are culpable should be sent to jail and they should face the music. And let the judicial process take right. right. uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, Anambra is still in the news, uh, aside from the election and, of course, uh, the state being used as yastic for the 2023 election. The case of um, the, uh, the governor, Obiano, is still uh, resounding. Malami, arrowhead of EFCC's move against Obiano, Anambra alleges. People should not worry themselves. There have been this off cycle election. EFCC went after Farish. EFCC went after this. I have asked you what kind of judgment has EFCC gotten against all these governors they've gone after. I'm asking you. And then I said that it's economic and financial crackle. One of the responsibilities of EFCC is to prevent some of these things from happening. It is not only about prosecution. It's about the intelligence gathering. And it's for them to maintain financial intelligence and finance, compliance with with them with financial rules and beyond going and arrest after they've committed the crime. What is CFCC? What are the operatives doing to prevent such? You know, uh, we call OB as a question, uh, Madam Due Process, because you have the Due Process Act that talks about how contract can be award, awarded in government. Why are we following that? Is CFCC keeping his eye on the ball? Must they come and then come to the bridge of the, we are going after our piano? After we go after our piano? No, then they will come after uh, after the governor of Washington State or come after the governor of Washington State, come after, I remember the one in Lagos State, shortly after Ambody left office. They came after Ambody and then the the people in Nepal um, stopped them from, 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 from getting from getting across across them. We must do things right and this nature approach will not help us. Why can't we prevent them from stealing this money? through intelligence gathering and with all of these agencies, the due process, the Auditor General Office, and the rest of them doing what they are employed to do. And then I can assure you, we, we have meaningful progress. All right. Um, again, as we round off, uh, Nigeria Air, a federal government to float IPO begins operations with three planes. Well, let's wait. Um, hopefully, the Nigeria Air, we we start flying and we start flying and it will not just be in the air that it has been but that actually the planes will land and they will take off uh, uh, nigeria as a nation we must have our own national currency this place if you call ourselves the national the the, the giant of africa and we don't have a national career and we don't have something which we can relate to and that we can call our own we pray and i hope that it works out this time around um, and then that most of what is required will be given to Nigeria, not that we go abroad to go and design the logo, and then we pay foreigners that, um, that, that, that money that we should retain within, within, within our domestic national product. So I, I, I hope and I pray that the workers, as, I, as I'm talking to you, I've been to the airport this morning, and I saw what we have in terms of, in terms of arrangement. It's not, it's not, it's not into right to my bank, but we can improve on that if we have our national career, and then probably we make investment in critical infrastructure. I hope the Minister of Aviation and the Syrica we get it right this time around. And if we get it right, it's for the benefit and the good of all Nigerians. It's not that when we criticize government or when we come on here, we love criticizing government. 
We want Nigeria to be better. If it is better for you and I, it principles have no respect for. God makes his way to fall on everybody, whether you're a sinner or you're not. So if government come, if government, if government uh, repairs a road, construct a new road, provide critical infrastructure, it affects service. It doesn't know the color of your party. It doesn't know the color of your tribe. It doesn't know the color of your religion. Whatever. Everybody will go through it. I saw one, one, one tweet in the newspaper, uh, one tweet on Twitter where someone said that um, was, it, was, it was a bit comical. This thing around 45, where it, it does not affect APC members, Abi. And the guy, the guy asked, quit. And for me, we want Nigeria to be better. We want to get things right. Because once it's better, it's our nation. We are proud of our nation. Not that we love coming on here to criticize, to talk about everything bad about. When there is security, I can take my car and travel to Katna and say, you know what? I want to go on a trip to Katna. I want to go on a trip to Yankari Game Reserve. I want to go. I want to go to Calabar. I want to go to Goja. I want to go to these places. There are no tourist attraction in Nigeria. You don't need to go abroad to enjoy yourself in Nigeria. There are beautiful places, but can we go there? We can't. I want to go to Mabila Plateau. We can't go there because of the state of the insecurity and the state of the infrastructure we have. Do you know what Nigeria would gain if we have good security and good infrastructure from tourism alone? Dubai. United Arab Emirates tries on, on what? On tourism. And on tourism. And that's what we want our country to be. We want our country to be the best country in the world. And that's why it pains us. All right. It touches our heart. All right. Thank all you. All of these things are not in place. All right. Then. Yeah, thank you so Justin. much, sir. Indeed, uh, that's yeah, as much as we can take on um, of the press that we must say a very big thank you to gd johnson chief lecturer nigeria institute of journalism for those analysis um, this morning we do appreciate your time thank you thank you and thank you mercy thank uh, you have mercy on me yeah you're <laughs> thank you for coming through we do appreciate your time and we step on the brakes right now and tell you what happened today the 26th in history please stick around Tired. I don't know why. Oh. Um, let me look up the answer to you now. I forget.